Welcome to video write-up from the Internetwache CTF 2016. This video will be about three web challenges that I solved. Besides those three web challenges, I have also solved three crypto and three exploitation challenges, for which I will also make a video. So let's start with the first web 50 challenge called Mess of Hash. Students have developed a new admin login technique. I doubt that it's secure, but its hash hasn't been crackable. We get a URL to the login page and also a zip file with the source code. The zip file contains a readme which has PHP code snippets inside. So we see that there's a certain admin user and the admin password seems to be a hash. And we also get the two functions clean hash, which is cleaning up a little bit, uh, replacing some characters. And we have a function called my hash, which does MD5 two times over the input string with a certain salt. And obviously because this is a login, the password has to be compared and usually you would compare the hashes from the input. And if you know a little bit of PHP, then you know maybe about this crazy handling of types in PHP because PHP automatically converts certain times into other types when possible. And you can see that the result is true. Those two different strings are true because PHP comes up with this great idea to automatically convert the string into a number and zero E uh, and a certain number is a very, very tiny number. It's basically zero as you can see here. So it's basically comparing two zeros with each other, two numbers. So now we just have to brute force the input that after two rounds of MD5 with the salt produces a similar number that will be compared. So let's look for generating some random strings in PHP so that we can simply brute force this. So let's copy that code here to generate a random string and then let's just simply create a while loop around Get generating random strings, applying the hash function to it, and then compare it to the admin um, password. And if that comparison is correct, we then print the password and just simply exit. Ah, made also a little mistake here at the while loop, missing parenthesis, and then we can simply copy this code and paste it into a PHP shell. And now the loop is running and we are slowly brute forcing it. Let's open another one and create another instance <coughs> to utilize uh, multiple cores on the system to brute force this. So this will take a little while and it actually took longer than I thought it would. But in, in the meantime, we can start working on another challenge. So let's check out the web 60 challenge. The title is replace with grace. Regular expressions are pretty useful, especially when you need to search and replace complex terms. So let's look at the service URL. And if you know a little bit of PHP regexes, you will know that if you fully control the regex string that is passed to, for example, pragmatch in PHP, that you can have remote code execution. And there's a special regex modifier called preg replace evil, which you can already see those caution things that it can evaluate PHP code. So let's write the expression with the slashes and Basically, we want to match any character and we add the special evil modifier to regex. The next line really doesn't matter much, but the third one is important because this is where the match string would be passed to. And we can use backticks because backticks will execute a system command in PHP. And as you can see, we successfully executed ls minus la. And then we can see that there's a file called flag.php, which we then can simply read with cat. So here is the flag. Let's submit it and correct flag. So let's move on to the next web challenge, web 80. And it reads, old school blog. I stumbled across this kinda old school blog. I bet it's unhackable. I mean, there's only static HTML. So let's have a look at the blog and it looks pretty boring. There seems to me not much to interact with. But if you read those blog posts, you find that he had been looking at a tool called Git. And if you have used git before, you know that git creates a special folder called .git, which is usually hidden when you work on Linux or something. But you can see that .git, if you try to access that one, it gives us a forbidden because we are not allowed to read the directory rather than uh, not found like we did with some arbitrary random string. So there seems to be a .git folder available. Now let's explore how a Git repository looks like. So I simply go to my GitHub and clone my YouTube repository here. And then we can explore the .git folder, what kind of files are included there. When we look at this .git folder, there's quite some stuff. With find, we 
can display the whole hierarchy inside those folders. So first of all, there are those objects stored in different subfolders and they are hashes and they are unlikely to be the same on this remote service. But there are other files that are static or have the same name in every Git repository. So in, as a first step, we try to download those files. So I've created here a text document with uh, typical files and folders from that Git repository and I've added the URL and then I just basically make a shell script out of it and wget all those files. So let's make the script executable and execute it and download all the files. Cool, some of this works and downloads, some other files don't work. So let's explore what kind of files we were able to download and what kind of information they contain. You can find good documentation online on how Git is structured. So I did a little bit of research while doing this challenge. So I know that in this logs folder, there is this file head, which contains information about the commit history. The, you can see here the commit text as well as different kinds of hashes. So now you can slowly make your way through the Git jungle. I know that from this research that those hashes here reference objects, which are obviously contained in the object subdirectory. And it works like that, that the first byte or the first two characters here from this hex representation is one subfolder and then the remaining hashes are sorted in there. So that's kind of like a little bit of hashing algorithm if you in hashing in the original sense of meaning of the word hashing of organizing data. So we can use this and download these objects. And as you can see, they exist. And now we can even start using regular git commands like git log and we see this git log of commits and uh, who made those commits. But git also has another cool tool called git fsck which helps you to find missing files or corrupted files. And yeah, you can see the output of here and you see that there are a couple of broken links and missing blobs and trees. And those are more object hashes that are missing. With git log minus p, we should be able to see the full change log of the files. So basically the file contents, how it changed, but you get an error that there are those missing objects. So we just gather those hashes and also download them. So I just copy them into the shell script and then I also remove the ones that appeared twice and then I add the wget minus r command to also download these objects. So let's run the script now and we see that we download uh, even more objects. So let's get back into the git uh, repository and now let's try git log minus p and it actually says here that it works now, there's no error. So let's do again, git fsck and see if there's still stuff missing. And we get more hashes that are now missing and we can basically do the same again. Seems like only uh, three or so are missing, so let's just uh, copy them here in the shell. We don't have to execute this script. And yeah, so we download more. Let's have a look at the uh, git command output now. And boom, we get the changes of the files. And you can see that apparently in a previous version of the site, there was the flag included. And now we can just copy this and we get correct flag. Let's see if we found a valid hash for the first challenge. But PHP is still running, hasn't found a hash yet. So we just have to wait. Okay, now quite some time later, we've apparently got an output that should produce a valid hash that p bypasses the comparison in PHP. So let's go to the login page again, and then we can enter the admin username, which we know from the readme file, and then just copy the password that we apparently found. And indeed, we were able to log in, and we got the flag, and we get the correct flag.